Hello everyone, welcome back to Mad About Cards and Crafts. Today I have a card to share using Arteza gouache paints. I'm going to be using this Penny Black Blissful Blossoms and all the colors of the gouache that I use for this will be listed on the screen. I am using my silver brush markers. I have sizes 2, 4, and 8, I believe, are the ones that I use for this particular project. And I'm beginning by using the Gina K Designs Warm Glow. Now, this is a technique that I saw Jill Foster use for Penny Black, and I will link the video down below, and it enabled me to purchase these gouaches. And I think that I am a, I'm an okay watercolor. I'm definitely no Kathy Rakusin or you know Christina Werner but I think I do I can do okay with watercolors but I thought that this was fun because the gouache is water reactive but it's more opaque than watercolor so you'll see in this video that I'm able to layer the gouache the different colors of gouache and I'm going to get a completely different look. In fact, it actually looks like I acrylic painted this particular piece if you look closely and that's one of the things that I really love about this. It's super forgiving and if you feel like you are not getting water coloring and want to try something new then I definitely would recommend the gouache. Now, I'm a full set syndrome girl let's just you know be real here and so I did purchase the 60 set and you don't necessarily need to purchase that big of a set it was a pretty good deal I think I spent like thirty two dollars to um, purchase the bigger set and that just means that I'm not going to have a lot of mixing of colors to do I can actually use a lot of these colors straight out of the tube they are in tubes just like the Daniel Smith watercolors and as you can see here I am just simply painting over the image that I stamped so I'm going to co cover that completely with this first layer of gouache and now I'm coming in with this eucalyptus which looks almost white but it actually is green and this is actually a pearl color so there's some metallics in there there's some pearlescent type gouaches there's regular gouaches it's a really nice mix and I will link below the set that I purchased and I will show these later on this I, I just received them in the mail and I knew immediately that I wanted to play with them so I have not swatched them out this is my first real-time use of the product and you can see that it goes on pretty easily now I'm going to use a smaller brush and I'm going to use this toffee color to uh, outline the branches and the only thing that I would have really done differently with this card is I, I forgot to add a second tone of brown to the to the card so I think I would have added a darker tone of brown just to get a little bit more interest in the card but otherwise for my very first time using the gouache paints I think that they are fabulous and I'm looking forward to stamping images um, such as my greetery stamps that have different layers and then coming in with the gouache to add highlights and things of that nature. This one um, I just you know was playing literally I'm just I'm just playing with the gouache and I think that I will be using them more frequently I was really happy with them I don't need an artist grade gouache so this inexpensive set with tons of colors is perfect for me and so now I'm just going in and I'm just going to paint the centers and I'm not doing this like you know I'm not trying to 
get any fine lines at this point. All I'm doing is laying down color and seeing what I get with this. And if the card turned out decent enough, I was going to share it. And if the card didn't, then I wasn't. So you can say that I am happy with the card. Is it my best work? Maybe not. I'm sure that I can do you know, better work later on, but for my first time laying down the color, I just wanted you to see how easy it is and how forgiving it is. I will come in with a third color, and with that third color, I'll do just a little bit of flicking to try to uh, blend the two inks or the two gouache colors together and just... Um, balance balance things out between that purple and that blush. One of the things that I will say is that I definitely need to swatch these out because the colors are not true to what's on the outside. I mean they're not off terribly but they definitely aren't accurate so I will be going in and swatching these out and that's probably a video I will share with you if you would like to see that please leave um, a comment in the box below. So I'm coming in with an olive color and just adding a little bit more depth to the leaves. And I, you know, like I said, I'm not, I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just laying some color down and the brush is a number two brush and it's working beautifully. So off screen you'll see my hand go up and that's just me using rinsing off in the dirty water and then reapplying some water to my brush in the clean water. And so unlike watercolors I'm not washing my brush as frequently. I just am picking up the the ink or the gouache from uh, that left hand side and I did dilute it with water so I'm not using it full strength all of that is definitely diluted and you can see the intensity that the color you know still has so here's where I'm going in and I'm just gonna you know try to get a little bit softer of a look with this bubblegum pink and I like the way that that blended and softened it up. This penny black stamp is, you know, was the perfect stamp for me to practice on because it's a solid image and basically all I'm doing is, you know, coloring coloring by numbers. Do you remember doing that? Coloring by numbers? That's basically what I'm doing here. The paper that I'm using is the B watercolor paper that I typically use and it moved beautifully. I did, don't know I may try it on some Bristol Smooth just to see what the difference is if if I get any uh, different type movement but I thought this held the water you know really well. I do use some um, Elizabeth Crafts double-sided tape. I did get a little bit of warping once I started doing the background but other than that you know I thought that it held the the water fairly well. So here's where I'm coming in with a sky blue and I'm just going to outline my image and you can see how easy that is moving and you can see that the flowers are a little bit more opaque because I used a heavier hand with them and this uh, sky blue is actually looking more like a watercolor and is behaving is behaving that way so it's it moves around really nice it, it's giving me a night a nice wash I'm not using a whole lot of color I'm taking some of the color off some of the other areas where I was a little bit more heavy-handed and just thinning that out so let me know in the box below are you somebody who would like to try these um, does it look like something that might help you with your watercoloring techniques? I would highly recommend them and like I said I wouldn't you know I'm not saying you need to buy the 60 set but I think that they're a very affordable option to try and practice with and I think that the results were were pretty good.
you know, for my first try. I thought that they that they were pretty good. Um, if you are a new subscriber, I want to thank you for joining my channel. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and that way you'll know when I put up a new video. I'm trying to put up three videos a week. Right now I've been working on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. We'll see if that schedule stays the same, but that's that's my goal is to um, is to post on those three days. And let me know what you what you think of these gouache paints. I would love I would love your comments below. So I'm not going to share me putting the tape on the back. I didn't think that you guys needed to see that painstakingly long detail. So I did basically cut that out. But I am going to come in with some Holbein white gouache that I already had in my stash. And I'm going to flick a little bit, not a whole lot, but just a little bit onto this panel and then I will cut it down to four by five and a quarter and here we go right here with that whole line now I'm going to stamp my sentiment and that is from another penny black uh, stamp set and I stamped it. It didn't stamp right because I didn't have my foam pad in there. And then when I put my foam pad in there, it didn't stamp in the same spot. So my bad, but you can see in the right hand corner that I'm going to fix that. I'm first going to layer this on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch uh, Hero Arts lapis card base. And then this is Elegant Stitching by Penny Black. I'm going to use that frame. And that was Nina uh, Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And then I will use a card base that is made out of uh, Nina Solar White 110 pound. That is a Pink Fresh Studios die that I use to fix my boo boo and cover it up. And that will be my card for today. I'm going to show you another look at it. And again, I want to thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. I hope that if you like this video that you will give it a thumbs up. And that will help me to continue my YouTube journey and hopefully get monetized. So thanks again everybody. I will hopefully see you on Saturday and until then have a great weekend. By the way, I don't use those. I don't use those. There's a look at my card. Have a great day. Bye-bye.